Hey there, today we're checking out the NVIDIA GeForce 6150SE plus NForce 430. That is a very big name. So this graphics card, or I should say iGPU, is on a motherboard of all things, which is pretty interesting. And to add to that, it was released in 2004. So it is a very, very old. And somehow it even has Windows 10 drivers, which I don't completely understand, but that's fine. So, this has two pixel shaders, one vertex shader, one tumus, and one rapus. I don't know any of that is, but it has those. The GPU clock is 425 MHz, which is quite slow. It also has 128 MB of DDR RAM, or VRAM, which is also very slow and barely any. And today I'm going to try to game on this, because, well, why not? Also, here is everything in CPU-Z and GPU-Z, if anyone wanted to see everything in detail. The CPU I am pairing this with is a AMD Athlon X2 5600+, Plus, which is one of the fastest CPUs I can put in this motherboard, because it does not support phenoms. And we have 6GB of DDR2 667MHz RAM, Without further ado, let's get gaming. Starting off, we have the YouTube test. And with YouTube at 720p, at 30 frames per second, using auto YouTube quality, you know, auto quality YouTube, that's what it's called, it's a Google Chrome extension, and also H.264 IFY, uh, both of those combined help out a lot when it comes to playing back videos on slower computers. So basically I have it set to 720p, 30fps, and it is struggling. So the CPU is pinned at 100%, and also the get video is a little bit sluggish. It isn't sitting there and loading, but you can definitely tell it is slowing down, and it seems to be right around 20 frames per second, so not very smooth. Now, I forgot to test this, but in the past, I have tried to use Discord with this iGPU, and um, it really, really dislikes it. Discord is nearly unusable because of how slow it is, not because of the CPU. If I put a different graphics card in, Discord runs normally. Just with this iGPU, it is running slower than Molasses. Molasses is actually quite fast, by the way. Next up, I tried to play Minecraft Java, and it was unplayable. No matter what version of the game I tried, it could be the newest version 1.19, or the release 1.0, or going really old, I could be beta 1.0. All of those do not launch on this iGPU. The closest I get to a launched game is on beta 1.0, where the game goes over and is just a white screen. It doesn't crash though, but it still doesn't open. I think that also happened on 1.0, like the release 1.02, but one way or another, it's not playable. I also made the computer mad by moving around File Explorer, so that was neat. So, I tried to open up Apex Legends, and the keyword is tried, because the game didn't open. It gave me a screen saying Apex Legends, and then the screen disappeared, and then it said the game was closed. So yeah, Apex, Le Apex Legends completely failed to open. Now, I am not too surprised about it because it does not open on these old AMD CPUs, like my AMD Phenom or this AMD Athlon, but I think it's also not opening because of the iGPU. Also, I learned something new while recording this video. What is that you must be wondering? Well, Epic Games has a minimum requirement. Yes, Epic Games has a minimum requirement. So whenever I try to open up Epic Games, it says, Graphics card unsupported! And uh, it doesn't let me open the game. I mean, open the, the game launcher. So that is kind of disappointing, because there are some games inside of the launcher that I think should be able to run on this, like GTA V, but I can't find out because the launcher just refuses to open. So that's neat. Then I tried to open up Beam and G Drive, and the game, well, I'm not even really surprised, the game did not open. Now, there is a mode I can go into where I can play an older version of the game, which supports a DirectX 10 graphics cards, 
but this is DirectX 9, so if I'm not mistaken, no matter what I do, I won't be able to play the game on this graphics card. Brawlhalla also failed to open. I thought it would be a corrupted games file from how it was acting, since this is a 2D game, I figure it would run on pretty much anything. And I went over and ran the Steam integrity check to see if it was actually a corrupted game file, and I tried reopening the game about four and a half more times, and nope, it, it does not want to open. I'm pretty surprised. I really thought that would run on this. Well, okay, when I say run, I mean it would be around 3 frames per second, but I thought it would at least open. Then I tried Call of Duty Warzone 2.0, mostly as a joke. I thought it wouldn't open, and, um, well, if you're thinking I was going to surprise you with saying it was going to open, uh, no, it, it really did not open, um, at all. Not much else I could say about it besides, yeah, it didn't open, and even if it did open, you probably wouldn't get more than 0 0.1 frames per second at 266p resolution. The next game up on the list is CSGO, and um, this one I am very surprised about. It actually opened, and it actually got me into a game. So at 640 by 480 resolution on the lowest possible settings in the game, we were getting about 3 frames per second looking at more than just a wall, and we were getting about 7 frames per second looking at a wall. So not really anything good at all, uh, and I was dying pretty much immediately. So, yeah, it is flat out unplayable. But hey, it opened, so that's a plus. Maybe. Probably would have been better if it didn't open, but then that would have made this video more boring. The next game up on the list is Crab Game, and the game actually opened, sort of. We got to whatever screen this is, and it just stuck there. I'm pretty sure if I tried reopening the game again, it might actually work, because the game ended up crashing because I clicked it a whole bunch of times and it didn't like that. But if I was patient with it, I think it might have opened, and I might have been able to set the settings to the lowest. But I'm not going to go into depth with this one, because I have a identical running game coming up in the list soon, called Muck. The next game up on the list is Dota 2. Now, Dota 2 did not open. It gave me a graphics card error, which actually is a little bit surprising, because I've never had Dota 2 failed open on anything. Dota 2 has opened on everything I've thrown at it so far, besides this one graphics card, or iGPU. So that's somewhat disappointing, and somewhat surprising at the same time, but even if it did open, it probably wouldn't have been playable in the first place anyway. So, oh well, it's fine. The next game up on the list is Lost Light. Now, I do not know much about this game besides, it's a game, and you can shoot guns in it, but that's about it. Either way, or either way, that's apparently because said either and not either, but either way, the game didn't give me a crash error, it didn't give me any complaints about the graphics card or anything, it just refused to open. So, that's something. The next game is Mafia. Now, I don't know much about this game besides Random Gaming and HD, which is another fellow YouTuber. Um, they said that this game will run on pretty much anything. And I thought, eh, no, no it won't. Well, nope, I am flat out wrong. Um, it's running on this. Not great, mind you, it's 640 by 480 on the lowest settings, or I think it's the lowest. I can't understand if settings are on or off in the menu, but one way or another, driving around the city, I'm getting between 20 and 30 frames per second, which is Playable! Yes, 20 is low, but for me at least, this is a playable experience. That doesn't mean much, but still though, it is actually running, and you can actually drive around the city, and actually see the game as a game, and not actually a frozen screen that says, Sorry, I cannot open! It's your graphics card is not supported! So that is actually very nice. Although I really don't like how the camera is in this game, but that's not the computer's fault, that's the game and how the camera works. 
The next game up on the list is Muck. Now, Muck is from the same developer as Crab Game, and this was more of a joke game, if you want to call it that. Either way, the game it doesn't matter the settings or the resolution, it's getting about 1 to 3 frames per second. Now, I don't have a clue what it would get inside of a world because I couldn't really get past the menu. But even if it did get past the menu and into a world, I wouldn't expect much more than 3 frames per second anyway. So, muck, yes, it's nice, it opened. Yes, it took me over one hour to set the settings from high 1080p to low at 800 by 600 no, 640 by 480 I mean. But still, though, it is not a good experience, and yeah, not much I can say about it besides that. The next that came up on the list is a Microsoft Solitaire. Now, I've never had a computer where Microsoft Solitaire refused to open, and Microsoft Solitaire refused to open on this. It just immediately crashes once you try to open it. Well, not immediately, it takes it a minute or so, but... It never finishes opening, and it just crashes. So, yeah, it's completely unplayable. The next game up on the list is Roblox. Now, I didn't expect this game to open, and, well, my expectations were valid and correct. The game didn't open. It just said, yep, yeah, sorry, uh, we don't support anything older than DirectX 10. So... Yep, Roblox is completely unplayable. Now, there is one more thing I cannot actually capture with my camera as it is only 30 frames per second. But what it is, is basically when the computer is under any graphical load, like for example, YouTube or opening up a program that uses the graphics card, uh, the mouse actually starts lagging. It feels like the mouse is going at around 20-ish frames per second, which is really, really weird. I never have had that happen on any other computer besides this one on the iGPU. So if you want a slightly laggy mouse, I guess this is for you, maybe? I don't know. But I am getting a bit tired of playing with this iGPU, so I think it's time to stick in a pretty nice graphics card compared to this, which is the Quadro 600, and we will be able to see what this computer is actually capable of, because the Quadro 600 should be able to get everything out of that CPU. So, the next thing is watching YouTube, and we're going to be doing this with the Quadro 600 in here. If I were to be using a, for example, AMD HC5450, it wouldn't actually run the same because the AMD HC5450 doesn't do as much video encoding as the Quadro 600, so it would run a lot slower, and it would be basically maxing out the CPU, and the graphics card wouldn't be doing anything. But with the Quadro 600, 600 in here, YouTube at 720p at 30 frames per second ran flawlessly. It took a little while to load a video, but once the video was loaded, it was just fine. And then I went over and tried 1080p at 60fps, and this is pushing it as the CPU is fully maxed out and the graphics card is around 70% used but it actually did do it. Now, if I was on a more intensive video, if you want to call it that, if there was more action on screen, I am pretty confident that it would actually start lagging. So, 1080p, 30 frames per second would probably be the sweet spot. And when it comes to web browsing, it was a lot more responsive than when it was on the iGPU. The iGPU was definitely a lot slower at web browsing. So, the first game up on the list is Beam NG Drive. And on the grid map, we were getting about 15 or less frames per second which is quite bad. I was at 1080p on the lowest preset. So, yes, it is a smooth-ish 15 frames per second, but still not very ideal. But it is still a pretty big bump up compared to before, because before I wasn't actually able to open up this game. 
CSGO at 1080p on the lowest preset was somewhat playable. It was getting about 15 to 20 frames per second. Most of the time it was below 20. Um, but one way or another, I managed to take down about 10 players in the game, which is a pretty decent game for me. No matter the FPS, that is still pretty decent. But I think I am slightly better in this game at lower frames per second. The reason why is because when I was playing with my Celeron G400, with my Celeron G470 uh, in a previous video, I was actually able to get first place, which I've never done before. So somehow, some way, I am better at low frames per second in CS:GO. Mafia at 1080p on the same settings I used last time was getting around 30 to 40 frames per second. I do not think it dropped below 30 frames per second at any point, but I might have missed it. But it felt pretty decent. It was somewhat stuttery though, and it was somewhat a low frame rate. What did I just say? It is a somewhat low frame rate, so not ideal, but I'd say it is definitely playable. Muck at 1366x768 resolution was running at around 30 to 40 frames per second. It was not a very good experience though as it often did drop into the 20s. Or at least the stutters did. So it's not a great experience but it is in fact playable. The next game up on the list is Minecraft Java Beta 1.0, and I was using 1080p with the normal render distance on the fast settings. So, the game was running between 30 and 40 frames per second, which is actually lower than I was expecting, as this is a very, very, very old version of the game. This version of the game was released in 2010, to give you an idea of how old it is. Then I tried Minecraft Java 1.19.2 with the Sodium mod and the Phosphor mod and enhanced block entities. And on the absolute lowest settings, I was getting one frame per second. Yes, one. Uh, it, it did occasionally go up to two or three, but it was mostly hanging around one. So yeah, it is uh, pretty unplayable. So do I recommend you to go over and play on the NVIDIA 6150SE? Well, the answer to that is no, I, I don't. It is a very, very bad experience. Either way, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.